Um, so th again, thanks everybody for joining. And Sue, you can see my screen, correct? Uh, yes, I can. Great, wonderful. So um, again, you know, what's important to realize is that as everyone is adopting a work from home policy and some organizations are doing it for the first time ever, um, a lot of folks have scrambled as to how to do this. Um, Tetherview has been kind of at the heart of this concept of the digital bunker for, for quite a while. We invented the term um, with regards to the cloud and we're kind of the anti-cloud. And, you know, I want to paint the picture of what's going on today. So as municipalities, governments, um, all sorts of organizations kind of said to their teams, you now need to work from home. You can no longer, um, you can no longer uh, report to the office. Um, they had to quickly come up with policies. And what they did was they um, kind of said, use your home computer, log into your email, here's your password, and access these other kind of business systems from your, your home computer. And the problem with that is that you're creating exposure at multiple levels. Um, the greatest exposure that you have is through your web browser. So when you log into the web browser, you know, most organizations don't know if the computer that the person is logging into, maybe for the first time for a corporate event, for corporate purpose, has ever been updated and what type of vulnerabilities are there. And even web browsers, if you kind of look at how often Google pushes out a, an update for Chrome, they're almost always security related. Um, and there's lots of different numbers out there. So sometimes Chrome is pushing out updates, you know, at a ferocious rate because of the vulnerability that, that, that hackers take advantage in inside Chrome itself. Um, so again, when we send people home, we don't know what they're connecting, what they're using to connect to, um, um, tether, uh, to, to, their, to their corporate environment and what type of other problems that's gonna have um, for them going forward. So the digital bunker, what we've done is we've created a situation where you can work from any device, anywhere, anytime, and access your corporate workspace in the same consistent manner as you do as if you're in the office, at your friend's PC, at your child's PC, literally from any device that has internet, you'll be able to work safely and securely. Um, and the concept is, is that we literally wanna create this bunker mentality for you that you get into from any device so that you get that consistent experience. But what's also important is that we're consistently delivering security, compliance, and mobility around that. And we'll get into disaster recovery in a little bit. And one of the key fundamentals of Tetherview, there's two kind of guiding principles here that drive us. First is the concept of the digital bunker. And second is the concept of frictionless cloud. Um, and, and the inspiration for frictionless cloud came from an Einstein quote, which is everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Um, and that's really what we strive to do, right? Because if things are complicated, they will break. And when complicated things break, it's really difficult to, to fix it. You don't know where it's broken. If there's a million pieces, you've got to kind of go through the checklist and hopefully you've got systems in place. But at Ted of you, we've got this concept of frictionless where we want our users and their data to be next to each other, on top of each other, so that so that we're not distributing data everywhere. So we have control. So if something goes wrong, we can quickly get ahead of it and stop it from happening. And it also allows us to turn things off and have an inordinate amount of visibility on what's happening inside your environment. So again, if you're a corporate environment and all of a sudden you tell all your employees to work from home from a web browser, you don't know what they're doing. Are they downloading the data locally to their desktop? Do you have any visibility on that? Um, is there anything is there anything that you can do to stop that? And the answer is no if you just blanketly allow people to, to work from any device without the controls in place um, that they might need. Um, and again, what, what, we're, what I'm going to ask is if you want to raise your hand, there's a little button to raise your hand. Raise your hand there. Um, we'll kind of see it and, um, and I'll try to address any questions, you know, as we go. Um, and again, we'll unmute this in a little bit and uh, get, get folks around it. So what's inside the digital bunker? What does a client get and what should they be doing? Well, forget the Tetherview aspect of it. What should you do to protect your environment? Well, first, you have to make sure that every device that your users are working from are updated and secure. Secondly, we strongly recommend that anything that you access that is sensitive or somewhat important data 
it is controlled by multi-factor authentication. So your users cannot get access to that data without having multi-factor authentication ahead of it. And that's critical. Third piece is visibility and control. So prevent your users from being able to download sensitive data to their local machine and email it through their AOL account. And let me paint the picture for you, right? You log in, you sit down at your home computer, you got your Office 365 for corporate logged in in one tab for Chrome. Um, you got another tab that's opened up and it's got your AOL account and hopefully not many people have AOL or your personal email. Um, and then you've got, you know, Facebook going and all sorts of other kind of personal um, um, applications running in the background. Well, when you start intertwining the two, personal and corporate, and you don't have the controls in place to prevent bad things from happening, um, you then lose all control, right? And all of that data now that your, your folks are working on can go anywhere and everywhere, and you really have no visibility on it. Um, the other thing is, from a scalability perspective and rolling that out, that's really hard to do, right? If you're trying to roll out quickly 100 employees and you're trying to tell them, hey, you know, get these devices, we're gonna install it, we're gonna control it, um, it's almost impossible to do if you're in an emergent situation. With Tetherview, though, we've kind of combined the best of both worlds. We allow you to take your personal device and work from that, and you are accessing your corporate device from that personal device through the Tetherview Digital Bunker, um, and that's what we did. So what's, what's, what's included as part of this? So what we've done is we've included security at an enterprise level, uh, we include compliance, um, and on a compliance perspective, we can meet or exceed the requirements of any regulator out there today. So if you need HIPAA compliance, if you're working in other types of industries, we will meet or exceed the compliance requirements of, of pretty much any regulator that you're required to, um, to, to adhere to. Um, and we do that at the highest level. So not only are we saying that Tetherview is compliant, but the user experience that we deliver to you is actually compliant. And that's an important, important subtlety that I'd like to just spend a couple of seconds on. So for example, if you were trying to build an environment in, um, in AWS or at Microsoft, what they're doing is basically handing you a container that's empty. And you've got to fill the container with your applications. You've got to fill the container with how you want how you want your users to access it and then you got to determine how you're going to distribute it and label it and what top are you going to put on top of that container what ten of you does is we provide you that end user experience that's fully compliant so as soon as your user logs in we are going to meet and exceed the compliance requirements so if you think of compliance as a checklist of one to a hundred think of public cloud services and most other cloud services as getting you to the 35th percentile Tetherview is going to get you to the 90th percentile, right? So with Tetherview, the difference is, is that we are doing it for you in an end-to-end -end solution and handing it to you in a turnkey way. Nobody, no provider is ever going to tell you, and if they do, they're, it's not possible. No provider can tell you by buying their product, you are compliant, okay? It's not going to happen. By buying our product, we're going to get you to the 90th percentile of compliance. The last 10% is on you. Right? There's no way that Tetherview is going to determine who should access certain files. Tetherview is not going to be able to determine where they should access those files. And we don't know, you know your business or, or what, what, when someone should be accessing things. So we're going to give you the tools and we're going to get you to the 90th percentile of compliance. But it's up to you to train your people, to tell us what needs to compart be compartmentalized. And if you think of an organization that has, let's say, the formula to Coke, okay, um, you got to tell us, hey, this is the formula to Coke, right? But you need to tell us how, who, what, where, and when we get that. So again, compliance and security are done at that very, very high level. And if you think of that zero to 100, we're getting it to 90%. From a backup perspective, we have a very, very mature backup policy. So we are backing up in multiple different methodologies. We're backing up with different types of technology. And we're also backing up into different locations. So we don't think of disaster recovery and backup as a traditional sense. We think of it as business continuity. So you can literally jump from one computer to the next, okay, leave a building uh, uh, and go home and pick up any stranger's computer. And that's the level of business continuity that we think of. Um, mobility, 
that's the same thing, right? They kind of go hand in hand in the way we've built business continuity is that you can literally work from any device, any location, any time. Um, and that's the concept of, of mobility. Um, file sharing here, it's, it's what we want, what we really should say here is collaboration and communication. And we've actually changed the slide um, recently. And what we built into this is we want to prevent folks from using shadow IT. So shadow IT means, you know, you've got a great, great environment, but you have, you have no, you've locked it down so much that people can't function. So what we want to do is prevent that. So we make sure that as we hand an environment off to a client, that their users can work, they can collaborate, they can use their soft phones, they can turn on a web camera, regardless of where they are and whatever device they're on. Um, and again, you know, I, I want to not, not kind of jump into the technical aspect of this, but this kind of outlines some of the methodology, is that your end users, you know, can jump on any device, they jump into the, the digital bunker, we're providing that control, we're providing that flexibility, um, and then from there they connect to your SaaS applications, your Salesforce. From there they can connect to Office 365 or Azure, and from there they can connect to AWS. And what this does though, is it brings your users to the data. So instead of telling your data to go to all thousand of your employees and all of their devices, we're telling you, bring your users to the data, bring your data to the users, and everything meets in one centralized location so that we have control and visibility. A couple of things I also want to point out is from a cloud, cloud governance perspective, we think of cloud governance as a couple of things. Number one, it provides you with consistency of how your users get to the cloud, what they're doing when they're working from home, and it really provides that consistent approach so that you can scale up or scale down um, as you need to without having to worry this person's on a Mac, this person's on an iPad, this person's on a Surface, and God knows what else they might be trying to use at home to access their corporate device. It also allows you to accelerate deployment, right? So with a Tetherview virtual desktop, which is at the heart of our solution, your users can literally, you can, you can call us up and say, add 100 users, take away 100 users, um, and, and we can deploy that instantly. With the push of a button, we can give folks a very, very quick control and access to their piece. The other thing that's really important is cost management and allocation, right? So IT, very few organizations, and even the most sophisticated organizations, have the ability to tell you exactly what they spend on IT and IT technology. It's almost impossible because there's so many different pieces of it. And, and unfortunately, organizations dump too many pieces into the, the IT bucket, um, so to speak. So what we want to do is make sure that we can allocate costs cleanly and conveniently. And we do that because it's simple, A, for us to bill you, and B, we think our customers love it. So not only can we allocate to a group, but we can tell you how much each person costs because our billing is so simple. We charge based on per virtual desktop or per user. If you're a larger organization, let's say you have a 24 seven call center, you don't need one desktop for every single user. So we only are gonna bill you for the number of concurrent desktops that you need at any one given time. Um, other key feature that we strive for is this concept of zero trust. And this is a huge differentiator for Tetherview, right? Everyone talks about, you know, if you talk to highly technical people, the concept of zero trust means I assume that everybody behind the keyboard is their worst enemy. And that is absolutely the case, right? We are all our own worst enemy. It is impossible to remember passwords. It's impossible to remember um, where you got to go to access this environment. And what we want to do by creating a digital bunker is once you get in with one password, you no longer have to remember any other passwords. And what we want to do ideally is take away all of your other passwords. So think of it when you get in the door, okay, we know who you are. We verified you by multiple, multiple methods of authentication. We know you're working in a safe environment, okay? And from there, we're going to now allow you to access your other pieces. And by taking away your passwords, okay, there's no chance or it significantly reduces the chance that if you get breached, that these people are going to have your password to everything else right? Because there's only one password in and one password to get to everything. So we can prevent it so that you're not entering multiple passwords and potentially a web browser got breached, um, which is easy to do. 
and you put in a a password into a spoofed email or a bad bad web browser session so again the concept of zero trust is we want to make it so that once you're in there you're fully trusted but we don't trust anybody until they're in the door and to get in the door is pretty hard um, other things as part of this zero trust and kind of security even compliance piece is we monitor and see everything so we know when your users are logging in we know what they've done we know how long they've been in a session um, and we can give you that visibility as as a stakeholder in an organization to kind of determine that right so really really simple it's built in it's native to our solution we can give you visibility into everything that's going on in the environment um, and literally visibility of everything that's important in, an, in a situation like we are unfortunately living through today where people are home a lot of organizations want to know hey are these people active are they working um, um, if someone hasn't logged in for a couple of days um, maybe I can tell hey this person hasn't logged in we should set up an alert so we've had a couple of organizations a couple of our clients ask us to send them an attendance role daily at the end of the day who showed up on their desktop and how long they were there for um, and if something looks nefarious you know then they can they can have meaningful actions and have actionable data to, to work with to get there um, by by deploying this concept of frictionless cloud too this is really important right it's this concept of streamlined management and that's critical because because streamlining the management allows you to quickly roll out patches quickly roll out antivirus protection quickly roll out remote monitoring and auditing tools and we can deploy these things literally with the push of a button we can deploy it across all our VDIs if we notice that something's going on and we could we could get there and of course it's extremely scalable um, and ready to go so I'm gonna gonna because I want everybody to get a really good chance to networking because I think it was a great great point here of, of putting this together I want to talk about just compliance again real quick um, and what we do there so if you look here you know this is a big differentiator for Tetherview that end user experience is compliant and that's important right as you're sending people home you know regulators are gonna turn their eye today um, you know if you are not compliant HIPAA we all know that HIPAA is relaxing it and it's not as relaxed as everyone thinks it is right it, HIPAA rules are only relaxed if you have a patient that you suspect is infected with COVID okay for anything else you're not supposed to be relaxing the rules of HIPAA okay you need to you cannot do a FaceTime call with a patient if you're in the healthcare industry um, if you're an orthopedic uh, orthopedist and and violate the rules of HIPAA you need to make sure that that interaction that telemedicine interaction with your with your patient is compliant however if you're 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 treating your patient for COVID related symptoms you then have the ability um, to um, exercise judgment and um, and not need to comply with HIPAA in its in its in its in its biggest form. So again, you know, while while we're in this sense of kind of panic and and you know not panic, but if while we're struggling with the new normal of people working from home, you know, I think it's important that we also don't kind of get totally relaxed on security and compliance. Um, backup. You know we are backing up in multiple 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 different ways so we have multiple data centers that are geo redundant east coast west coast new jersey virginia california um, we are backing up your data if it's with us um, both on site in multiple copies and at multiple locations um, you know in many different ways so it's critical that um, you know when you when you're when you have your people working at home is their work being backed up right can you recover it if everybody's working off of their local PC think about how hard it would be to get that data back or if something were to happen to that PC how much data would be lost so again you know things to consider as folks are working from home um, sync and pocket protector um, these are the tools that I talked about earlier that avoid the concept of shadow IT so what we don't want is your folks going home and then just downloading data and putting it everywhere and because they want to work and they, everybody has good intentions you know what I realize is most people have good intentions it's it's just bad execution right or poor planning so what sync allows you to do it's our version of Dropbox it's our version of Google Docs um, and it allows people to collaborate um, without having to have the data everywhere so sync 
is built in natively and it's a freemium. It's part of your, your subscription with Tetherview. It's built into your, your user experience and it allows you to collaborate on files, share files, just like you do in Dropbox, just like you do with OneDrive, except that data is not in multiple locations. So it's not in a third party cloud. Of course, if you want to implement a corporate deployment of, you know, um, Office 365, which we think is an amazing tool. We're using it. It's helped us. It's really helped us um, on our help desk team and our troubleshooting team dramatically, Office 365. Um, but by, by deploying Tetherview next to Office 365, we're making it better because, again, we're consolidating that experience. Pocket Protector, um, it's a cute name, but it's, it's our version of a mobile device management. And what mobile device management is, it says that, hey, I've got this, this thing, which is a great tool, my mobile cell phone, but it's also a weapon and it's also a vulnerability. Um, so by deploying Pocket Protector on, on, your, on your employees' um, um, devices, it allows you to control your corporate um, piece while they're on the device um, without compromising their personal kind of privacy. So let's say you you have an employee, they want to access their email, they download Pocket Protector, we authenticate the device, and now when they're browsing the email, we make sure that the email's safe. Um, and it also allows us to wipe the corporate data from that device. If the employee leaves or for whatever reason we need to, we can wipe that device with the, with the corporate data. So again, Tetherview is thinking about all the tools we need to kind of get there. Um, kind of working towards the end here, but you know, integration of existing technology. What we don't want to do is shock the system too bad, right? So a lot of folks are, are concerned, hey, I'm going to switch and this is going to change the way I work. Exactly the opposite, right? We, are, we, we drive um, how, uh, um, you know, bleeding edge or how leading edge of technology we get by the customer, by you. You tell us what you want. So we want to seamlessly integrate your existing applications if they're working. We just want to make them work in a more secure, efficient manner. Um, but it also gives you the opportunity, if you're transitioning to Tetherview, to, to say, hey, I need to upgrade this thing or I need to want to change this type of system. We have that ability to do that as well. So again, we, 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 have, we can walk in and make it, you're using your computer one way today, you're gonna use your computer the same way tomorrow. The only difference is, is we're wrapping a digital bunker around it. So again, kind of wrapping that in. Um, and I think it's important here, you know, as everyone kind of walks into challenging times, every business is gonna be strained, unfortunately, for, for, for the next couple of months. Um, we look and we provide you know, value for what we're, what we're selling, selling our clients. Um, but also we give you a very, very easy methodology to kind of figure out what is it going to cost. So our pricing is based on per virtual desktop and the amount of data we host you host for you. And we've got only a couple of other services that we could sell like pocket protector. Um, but at most our clients get four, maybe five line items. Most of our clients are just getting two line items of billing from us. So really simple to understand. The other cool thing about it is we true up your, your real expenses monthly. So on a monthly basis, you know, we have a minimum that's built in, but on a monthly basis, you can either say we're adding 20 and we're going back, but you pay based on your maximum usage for the month and every month that's corrected and can get, 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 get back down or zero down to your, to your, your monthly minimum commit. So what makes us unique? You know, why Tetherview versus, you know, any other solution out there? A, and, and probably most importantly, is it's comprehensive, right? Um, so if you're interested and you're interested in learning more about Tetherview, um, Gartner um, is actually offering for, for, for a period of time for you to call their analysts and discuss Tetherview with their analysts, which is really cool. We're very excited about that. And one of the things that Gartner's telling us is how unique we are because of what we've bundled together. You know, we have bundled over 55 solutions to deliver what we do, um, and no one else has done that. We're, we're, we're the only ones that are doing it, um, and we're leading the wave by every, every, every fashion, including security and including compliance. The other thing that's really unique about us is, is this flat pricing, right? So I, I don't wanna kinda go over that, but you know, we are committed to giving you a great service. 
Um, and the last kind of thing that's probably, I want to, a lot of unique things, but the last thing I want to kind of mention here today is our no grumpy customer policy. Um, and this is important, right? You know, and it's a little selfish, but it sounds like it might not be, but I don't want grumpy customers, right? So we give every single client the opportunity to walk away from us prior to going into production. So what we do is we sign a contract with our client, we take a refundable deposit, and we build out your production environment. And prior to using it in production, you can walk away for any reason or no reason at all. And what that, what that allows us to do is really just tell the client, look, we're putting our money where our mouth is. Um, we're going to build it for you, test it, beat it up, please. And, and don't go live. Don't move it to production until you're fully satisfied. And we will walk, we will let you walk away for no reason because we don't want a customer who's calling us up incessantly because they're not satisfied. That costs us a lot of money. It distracts us from providing great service to our other clients. And I think it's critical um, that we're going to continue to provide this no grumpy customer policy for the foreseeable future. Um, so that wraps us up, right? I mean, so again, we appreciate to thank you for, um, you know, uh, allowing this and, and inviting us and we're, we're excited to work with you um, and your folks. 